Dr. James Yamazaki is one of America's pioneers in the field of atomic medicine. This is a short demo reel for a one-hour film on his life, focusing on the dangers of nuclear weapons in the post-9-11 era. We were the only one on deck as we approached Japan. Then the silhouette of the islands began to appear. It was quite a emotional. We had finally come back to the land where my father and mother had come from. I went to Japan to study the long-term effects, in fact, the lifetime effects of the atomic bomb on the survivors. I went to Nagasaki as the only American representative there, as physician in charge. The dean advised me that I should develop our contact with Dr. Shirabe, and he was the director of the hospital and professor of surgery, who was there at the time of the bombing, told us of what happened. I was sitting at his desk when all of a sudden he heard this sort of a swooshing sound then there was this big blast, and the ceiling fell over him, buried him. It turned blacker than night, he said. Couldn't see, and so he thought this was a hen, whatever it was. And then gradually, the air started to clear, and there was pandemonium everywhere. All the wooden structures surround, in the surrounding area was burning, and they said it's a roaring fire, and the sky was black, and people recognizing that Shirabe Sensei was a surgeon, there was call for his assistance everywhere. People's faces were swollen, burnt, and were light prostrate on the ground. Many of them were dead. Finally, in mid-afternoon, he asked one of his friends to accompany him and uh, see if he could find his son. And so they ran down the slope. They called aloud for him, but the structures had already been burned, and there was really nearly all the people in the buildings were killed instantly so that he realized uh, his son was gone. In the words of some uh, of the people that came the first few days afterward, the people has sunk to a primal level, just thinking about survival in the next few days. Terror-stricken that this kind of thing could recur on top of what had already happened. Certainly there were those who were very angry. How could they, as humans, use a weapon of this nature? They didn't know, in a way of saying, there's a ticking bomb inside of them, and when was it going to explode, and, and how was it going to manifest itself? Cancer, be, of course, cancer was foremost in their minds. Once uh, the finding of leukemia became very prominent, in the first few years of the investigation, a, a thorough search for other types of cancer was made. It was found that several types of cancer did develop in the individuals who were exposed to the bomb. Among them were cancers of the breast, uh, cancers of the stomach, cancer of the uh, lungs, cancer of the thyroid, and among the women uh, who were pregnant at the time, we found that, the, and who had definite signs of radiation exposure, these individuals gave rise to children with mental retardation and small head size. Aki and I, on September 11th, happened to be in the living room watching the television 
uh, the planes colliding into the Twin Towers in New York. It's all devastating almost as Pearl Harbor. And of course, as the scene developed, uh, we wondered what if this had been an atomic bomb? The people in the immediate vicinity, within 500 meters, say, they would all have been dead in five minutes. And at a distance of about a mile, in seven minutes, the, the population would all have been killed. Experts estimate that up to two million lives would be lost if a Nagasaki-type nuclear device were detonated in Manhattan. James Yamazaki was born in Los Angeles in 1916. His father was a minister who led the Japanese community in integrating with the culture at large. Growing up, James encountered racist attitudes, but he attended UCLA and went to medical school in the Midwest. He enlisted just before the attacks on Pearl Harbor. On his way east for basic training, he visited his parents and sister in a detention camp in Arkansas. James also visited New York City, and after a whirlwind courtship, he married his college friend, Aki. The best man at his wedding was Aki's brother-in-law, Min Yamasaki, who would go on to design the World Trade Center. When James shipped out overseas, Aki was pregnant with their first child. A week after he got to Europe, battalion surgeon Yamazaki was in the Battle of the Bulge. He was taken prisoner by the Germans and liberated six months later by General Patton's troops. I don't think it serves any good to say, go into why we dropped the bomb. Uh, we now know what a bomb does. We can't go back, put the genie back in the bottle. 60 years after the development of nuclear weapons, it's as important as food and water for our survival. I think it's a failure of the leaders of the country not to inform the young people about what we are facing in the future. Our film will look to the past and the future as we seek to come to terms with the dangers of nuclear weapons. MIT professor John Dower, author of War Without Mercy, will provide valuable insight on the role of race in the dropping of the atomic bombs. We will travel with Dr. Yamazaki to Japan to meet with his colleagues, to hear from survivors, and discuss with young people such issues as anger, forgiveness, peace, and proliferation. Dr. Yamazaki will travel to New York City to meet with experts such as Harvard professor Graham Allison, author of Nuclear Terrorism. They will discuss the grim consequences if New York were ever attacked with a nuclear weapon. They will meet with young people there to explore topics like race, religion, terrorism, and the after effects of an atomic bomb. Through a spirited discussion with young people of different backgrounds and beliefs, we hope to forge a consensus about how to confront our nuclear future. <laughs>